we can measure the abundance and distribution of some organisms using transects and quadrats. These are really simple sampling techniques, but they can tell us a lot about a community. So today, we're going to learn how they work. Sampling is done by ecologists to find the abundance of organisms, that means how many there are, and to see the distribution of organisms, which means where they are found. We're going to look at two methods that are used. These are both part of a required practical, so it's important to make sure that you understand them. Firstly, you can use quadrats. These are square frames that are laid on the ground. They may or may not have a grid inside them. You can then count the number of plants or slow moving organisms inside them. For obvious reasons, they can't be used for large or quickly moving organisms. How many flowers can you count inside this quadrat? Well, we can clearly see that there are five that are inside the quadrat and one that's part in and part out. It actually doesn't matter which way you count it. It could be five or six, as long as you use the same method for every quadrat sample that you do. It's also important to take as many samples as possible. This makes sure that your data is valid, which means that it shows what is actually happening. You also need to do quadrat sampling at random. You can do this by blindfolding yourself and spinning before throwing, closing your eyes, or a better way is to split your sample area up into a grid and then use a random number generator to pick your sample sites. If this quadrat were representative of a community, how many flowers would you expect to find in one meter squared? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the size of this quadrat. We've been given the length of it as 0.25 meters. We want to know the area as it's meter squared. And as it's a square, we're just going to multiply that number by itself. This will give us on a calculator, which you are allowed to use, 0.0625 meters squared. Now we need to see how many times smaller this is than one meter squared. So we do one divided by 0.0625 and that comes out at 16. So this quadrat is 16 times smaller than a one meter squared quadrat. Let's say we took our count to be five. We would now just do five times 16 to see how many you get in one meter squared. And it comes out at 80 flowers per meter squared. Now let's say you took seven samples with your quadrat, and these are the results that you got. You could be asked to process the data to give any one of these. So let's take a look at what each one means and work it out. The mean is just the average. So to do this, all you do is add up all of the numbers and divide by how many values you have. So in this case, we had seven samples, so we divide by seven, and this would give us 4.2857. Questions will specify if they want it to two decimal points or two significant places, etc. In this case, we'll do it to two decimal points, and the five makes the eight round up to give us 4.29. The median is the middle value. So we need to write all of our numbers out from smallest to largest, and then we just check which number is in the middle, and is five. The mode is the most common value. In this case, it's six, as we have three of those. And finally, the range is the highest value minus or take away the lowest value, which in this case is six minus one gives you five. The second method of sampling is a transect. We're going to look at line transects. This is just a measuring tape that is stretched between two points with quadrats placed along it at regular intervals, like every five meters. It allows you to see the effect of an abiotic factor on the organism distribution. And you can also measure this factor along the transect. For example, light intensity reducing from a grassland into a woodland. And you might predict that there'll be a big change in the distribution and variety of organisms found, as there'll be different amounts of photosynthesis able to take place in each area. Now it's time to try some questions. Pause the video, grab a calculator and some paper as you'll need it, and then press play when you're ready to go through the answers. One, this quadrat sample is representative of the daisy population in a field. How many daisies would be in one meter squared? 
Let's start by counting the daisies. Hopefully you got nine. Now we'll look at the size of the quadrat. It's 0 0.5 meters in length. So we'll work out the area by timesing that number by itself. And this will give us 0 0.25 meters squared. Now we need to see how many times smaller than a one meter squared area this actually is. So we're going to do one for the one meter squared divided by 0 0.25. And this gives us four. So this quadrat is four times smaller. So we're just going to do the nine multiplied by the four to make it four times bigger, which will give us 36 daisies per one meter squared. Two, Ali accounts the number of dandelions in eight samples using a quadrat. That's actually wrong, it should say seven samples. And here are her results. And you've been asked to work out the following. First up, the mode. Remember, this is just the most common value, which here is two. The median is the middle value, so we need to write them out in order from smallest to largest, and then find the value that's in the middle. It happens to be two as well. Next is the mean to two significant figures. So we're going to start by adding them all up and dividing by how many we have. And this gives us 2.1428. But we want it to two significant figures, which means two values. So we count our two, but we have to look at the third to check if we need to round up. As four is less than five, it means we don't round up. So we'll just keep the two values as they are, 2.1. And finally, the range is the biggest value, take away the smallest value, which is five minus zero, which gives us five. Three, why might you choose to set up a transect rather than using random sampling? If you're investigating the effect of an abiotic factor on organism abundance or distribution. How did you do? Next up, we're looking at the cycling of water and nutrients. And please subscribe if you find this useful. Thanks and bye.